Rotational motion is completely analogous to linear motion. While linear motion is the movement of an object along a straight line, rotational motion is the spin of an object through an angle. Linear motion serves as a conceptual basis for rotational motion. In this chapter, we repeat all of the equations that we met already for linear motion, but relabel them for rotational motion. When an object undergoes both linear and rotational motion at the same time, nature lets us totally separate those two motions from each other. The rotational motion is found to be completely independent of the linear motion, except in some situations such as objects rolling along the ground. The center of mass of this hammer follows a parabolic motion, while the hammer is also independently spinning about its center of mass. In linear motion, position x represents how far an object has moved from the origin. In rotational motion, x becomes theta, which is the angle through which the object has turned. Angles are often measured counterclockwise from the plus x axis. Linear velocity v equals delta x delta t, which represents how fast an object is moving, or how quickly the position is changing, becomes angular velocity omega equals delta theta delta t, which represents how fast it is spinning, or how quickly the angle is changing. This is the Greek letter omega. It looks like a w, but it is an omega, and omega gets its feelings hurt if you call it w. In calculus notation, these are v equals dx dt and omega equals d theta dt. Linear acceleration a equals delta v delta t represents how quickly an object gets fast. This is relabeled as angular acceleration alpha equals delta omega delta t, which shows how quickly it gets to be spinning fast. In calculus notation, these are a equals dv dt and alpha equals d omega dt. These five equations for rotational motion under constant angular acceleration are obtained from the five equations of linear motion under constant acceleration by replacing distance x with angle theta, linear velocity v with angular velocity omega, and linear acceleration a with angular acceleration alpha. These look like five equations, but there are only two independent equations. The others are just useful rearrangements. Rotational problems are solved using the same approach used for problems involving the equations of linear motion. As you read a homework problem, you'll fill in four out of six of these quantities, identify the two unknown quantities, and then look for an equation that's usable because it contains a single unknown quantity. The variables theta, omega, and alpha must all be stated in either revolutions, degrees, or radians. Time must always be stated in seconds. For angular measure, remember that once around a circle equals 360 degrees equals 2 pi radians equals 1 revolution. For example, 24 degrees can be multiplied by 1 revolution per 360 degrees to get 0 0.067 French revolutions. And 24 degrees can be multiplied by 2 pi radians per 360 degrees to get 0 0.42 radians. An arc length is s equal theta r. As an object travels along an arc, it has tangential velocity v sub t equals delta s delta t equals r delta theta delta t equals r omega, and it has tangential acceleration a sub t equals the change in the tangential velocity divided by the change in time equals r delta omega delta t equals r alpha, and centripetal acceleration, a sub c, which we often write as v squared over r, but here we'll choose to write it as 
are omega squared. All of these relations require the use of radians only, not degrees or revolutions. If an object rolls without slipping, then these equations relate linear and angular quantities. If the tires of a car are rapidly spinning while a car is barely moving forward, then the wheels are slipping along the ground and these relations do not apply. Since the tangential velocity of a wheel is proportional to the radius of the wheel, penny-farthing bicycles were used around the year 1900 by those persons who wanted to travel at a high speed. When gears were later added to bicycles, then the radius of the wheel became less important. If the radius of the wheel is 78 centimeters, what must be the angular velocity of omega if the tangential velocity is 8.7 meters per second? Please show that omega equals 11 radians per second. What is the period of the wheel's motion? Please show that the period is 0.56 seconds. This relation requires that omega be stated in radians per second. The rider is pedaling at a frequency f equal 1 over the period equals 1.8 per second. The angular velocity of a spinning disk goes from 24 degrees per second to 1.4 revolutions per second as it spins through pi over 2 radians. What is the angular acceleration in radians per second squared? And how many seconds elapse during the acceleration? We make the list of 4 out of 6 variables. The initial angle will put at 0. The final angle is pi over 2 radians. The initial angular velocity is 24 degrees per second, which is 0.42 radians per second. The final angular velocity is 8.8 .8 radians per second. Please show that equation 3, omega squared equals omega 0 squared plus 2 alpha theta minus theta 0, gives alpha equals 25 radians per second squared. And equation 2, omega equals omega 0 plus alpha t, gives t equals 0.34 seconds. If the spinning disk has a radius big R equals 0.26 meters, then a point on the edge of the disk has tangential velocity v sub t equals big R times omega equals 2.3 meters per second, and tangential acceleration a sub t equals big R alpha equals 65 meters per second squared. The tangential acceleration is half as much where little r equals big R over 2. All points at little r less than big R on the disk have differing tangential velocities and accelerations, but all points have the same angular velocity, omega, and angular acceleration alpha, so it is best to describe this rotational motion in terms of omega and alpha rather than the tangential velocity and tangential acceleration. All points on the spinning object have the same period and frequency. The tangential velocity v sub t equals big R omega is largest at the rim. V tangential is half that much at little r equal big R over 2. And the tangential velocity is 0 at little r equals 0. The magnitude of the torque tau equals the lever arm r times the force, times the sine of the angle between those two vectors, r and f, when they are placed tail to tail. And this is equal to the moment of inertia i times the angular acceleration alpha. In this problem, we've been given alpha equals 25 radians per second squared. The radius of the disk, big R, equals 0.26 meter. And the moment of inertia of the disk, i, equals 0.44 kilogram meter squared. To produce this acceleration, a force must be applied along a lever arm. The object is spinning about its center point, and the tail of the lever arm is located at that point about which the object is spinning. The tip of the lever arm is located at the point of application of the force. Please show that the force must be 42 newtons if it is applied at the rim where little r equals big R and at theta equals 90 degrees. 
please show that the force must be much larger, 810 newtons, if it is applied at little r equals big R over 4 and at theta equals 12 degrees. When placed tail to tail, the angle between the lever arm vector, little r, and the force vector is 12 degrees.